ASTM C143 is the standard test method for slump of hydraulic cement concrete. This test method is intended to provide the user with a procedure to determine slump of plastic hydraulic cement concrete. This presentation does not suggest to address the safety concerns associated with this procedure. It is the responsibility of the viewer of this presentation to follow all safety procedures, rules, and standards established by private companies, government agencies, and construction site supervisors. This presentation uses both inch-pound units as well as SI units. These units shall be regarded as separate. In other words, the value of one unit shall not be considered the exact equivalent of the other. Therefore, the units shall not be considered interchangeable. Any conflating of the two systems may result in non-compliance of this standard. This procedure was originally used to measure the consistency of concrete. However, it has been found that in laboratory conditions there is generally a correlation between an increase in slump and water content, and thus an inverse effect related to strength. This relationship between water content, slump, and strength is not as clear in the field. Therefore, care must be taken. To perform this test, we will need the following equipment. A mold. The mold can be steel or plastic, but must be in the form of a lateral surface of the frustum of a cone with a base 8 inches or 200 millimeters in diameter. The top 4 inches or 100 millimeters in diameter and the height 12 inches or 300 millimeters. The interior of the mold shall be relatively smooth and free from projections. The mold shall be free from dents, deformation, or adhered mortar. A mold which clamps to a non-absorbent base plate is acceptable, provided the clamping arrangement is such that it can be fully released without movement of the mold, and the base is large enough to contain all of the slumped concrete in an acceptable test. If the mold is made of metal, it shall have an average thickness of not less than 0 0.060 inches, or 1.5 millimeters, with no individual thickness measurement less than 0 0.045 inches or 1.15 millimeters. Plastic molds shall have a minimum average wall thickness of 0 0.125 inches, or 3 millimeters, with no individual thickness measurement less than 0 0.100 inches, or 2.5 millimeters. Check and record conformance to the mold's specified dimensions when it is purchased or first placed in service, and at least annually thereafter. The rod shall be a round, smooth, straight steel rod with a 5 8 inch or 16 millimeter diameter. The length of the tamping rod shall be at least 4 inches or 100 millimeters greater than the depth of the mold in which the rotting is being performed, but not greater than 24 inches or 600 millimeters in overall length. The rod shall have the tamping end, or both ends, rounded to a hemispherical tip of the same diameter. We'll also need a measuring device, such as a ruler, metal roll-up measuring tape, or similar rigid or semi-rigid length measuring instrument marked in increments of one quarter inch, or five millimeters, or smaller. The instrument length shall be at least 12 inches, or 300 millimeters in length. And, of course, we'll need a scoop. The maximum size aggregate permissible in this test is 1.5 inches, or 37.5 millimeters. If the aggregate is larger than 1.5 inches, or 37.5 millimeters, the test will be applicable when it is performed on the fraction of concrete passing a 1.5 inch, or 37.5 millimeter, sieve. The sieving procedure used shall be that which is described in ASTM C172, Standard Practice for Sampling Freshly Mixed Concrete. This test method is not considered applicable to non-plastic or non-cohesive concrete. Generally speaking, a non-plastic concrete is considered a concrete with less than one half inch, or 12.5 millimeters, slump, while a non-cohesive concrete is considered a concrete with a slump over nine inches, or 225 millimeters. When performing the slump test, it shall be done on a surface which is flat, rigid, level, moist, non-absorbent, and free of vibration. When filling the mold, 
It shall be filled in three equal layers in respect to the volume of the mold, and not the height of the mold. This means the first layer of concrete should fill 2 and 5 eighths inches, or 70 millimeters of the mold. The second layer should fill 6 and 1 eighth inches, or 160 millimeters of the mold. And the third layer should fill the mold to the top. Rod each layer 25 times uniformly over the cross section with the rounded end of the rod. For the bottom layer, this will necessitate inclining the rod slightly and making approximately half of the strokes near the perimeter, and then progressing with vertical strokes spirally toward the center. Rod the bottom layer throughout its depth without forcibly striking the base. For each upper layer, allow the rod to penetrate through the layer being rotted and into the layer below, approximately 1 inch or 25 millimeters. Lift the mold immediately from the concrete by raising it carefully in a vertical direction. Raise the mold a distance of 12 inches or 300 millimeters in 5 plus or minus 2 seconds by a steady upward lift with no lateral or torsional motion. Complete the entire test from the start of the filling through the removal of the mold without interruption and complete it within an elapsed time of two and a half minutes. Immediately measure the slump by determining the vertical difference between the top of the mold and the displaced original center of the top surface of the concrete. If a decided falling away or shearing off of concrete from one side or portion of the mass occurs, disregard the test and make a new test on another portion of the sample. Now that we've gone through the basics of ASTM C143, let's go through a detailed performance review. Before we begin, we are going to inspect the mold to ensure the interior is clean, free of mortar, dents, etc. Now, moisten the equipment. We want the equipment damp and not dripping wet. Set up the equipment on a level, non-absorbent, rigid surface, which is free of vibration. Stand firmly on the mold tabs. Fill the mold one-third by volume, 2 and 5 eighths inches, or 70 millimeters in height. Rod the first layer 25 times uniformly over the cross section with the rounded end of the rod. For this layer, incline the rod slightly and make approximately half the strokes near the perimeter and then progress with vertical strokes spirally toward the center. Rod this layer throughout its depth without forcibly striking the base. Add the second layer of concrete. This should fill the cone to 6 and 1 8 inches, or 160 millimeters in height. Rod this layer 25 times throughout its depth. Penetrate the previous layer by approximately 1 inch, or 25 millimeters. Add the third layer of concrete. The concrete should be heaping over the top of the mold. Rod the third layer 25 times, penetrating the previous layer by approximately 1 inch, or 25 millimeters. If the rotting operation results in the subsidence of the concrete below the top edge of the mold, add additional concrete to keep an excess of concrete above the top of the mold at all times. After the top layer has been rotted, Strike off the surface of the concrete by means of a screeding and rolling motion of the tamping rod. Maintaining downward pressure on the mold, remove concrete from the area surrounding the base of the mold to prevent interference with the movement of slumping concrete. Lift the mold by raising it carefully in a vertical direction. Raise the mold in 5 plus or minus 2 seconds by a steady upward lift with no twisting or turning. Immediately measure the slump to the nearest quarter inch, or 5 millimeters, by determining the vertical difference between the top of the mold and the displaced original center of the top surface of the concrete. If there is any shearing or falling away of the concrete, disregard the test and begin a new test on another portion of the sample. If there is shearing and falling away on a second sample, the concrete may lack the necessary plasticity to be considered applicable for this test. And a couple of final comments. The slump test must begin within five minutes after obtaining the composite sample. The slump test must be completed from beginning to end in two and a half minutes. And the rod used in the slump test must be steel. Plastic rods are not permitted in this procedure. 
And this concludes the ASTM C143, Standard Test Method for Slump of Hydraulic Cement Concrete.